These are the y-axis spacer blocks, the extension blocks. As you can see, that's 45mm. I had to make to fit the closed loop stepper motors. And they're the blocks that I got the magnetic B blocks for. Uh, I milled them up and then I service ground them on the tool and cutter. But these edges are fairly sharp. And as you have to lift this up, and it can actually, I have jacked it up with these before, but if they slip, it's your finger gone. There's no two ways about it. So I thought I'd put on a chamfer. Now I broke, broke the edges to file. But then I thought, nah, I'll just mill a nice little chamfer on there. And I thought, uh, you have to set them up. Tilt the vice, put a tilt and vice on, blah blah blah. I said, if I just had magnetic V blocks, can just drop them straight in and put it on a tilt and cutter, and away we go. And since they're already black, uh, black oxide them, it uh, doesn't seem to be coming out that well these days. I think it's a bit stale, it's quite a few years old. Half of it's evaporated, but good enough. So I'll just machine these inside edges on them. And I'll make, and I'll leave them bright, so I'll just make them you know, a couple of mil wide and should look nice. So that's why I got it, the V blocks, as you can just drop them in straight away. Plus, you don't have to clock it up with the V block, it's sitting there, and that surface is horizontal. It may be that way or that way, just as long as your cutter can go from there to there, uh, it will grind it. So, quick turn around and do one side, and undo the magnet, swing it around, do the other side, then flip it over. So, four grinds and it should be done. But I'll just show you what I have to do first. Right over at the till and cutter. Now that's a magnetic chuck I used. Just put around two blocks and so they're the same height, width and all that. This head swings so I could swing this head 45 and all that. But then you still have to clock them up, make sure they're parallel and all that, so the V-blocks. Now, that was on there for the other job. Now I could mount the V-block straight to there, switch this magnet on, and hold the V-block or leave this magnet off and just let the V-block magnetism pull the job and pull the V-block down. So, I'll have to see. But when you do till and cutting in your workshop, <laughs> it is extremely messy business. Each time you dress the wheel, you get all the grit everywhere. Every time you take a grind, you get the grit and the metal. Uh, that goes all over your workshop. Now I have a bit of clear decking, a clear sheet, and I just hang it up and grip it, but you then find your trouble, it hits this, it hits that. So these are the guts of an old suitcase, you know the old fabric ones and, the, and you go to pick them up and the handle comes off. And so I rip them apart and it's got the inner frame and then you've also got the wire frame. So I'm thinking of perhaps making a flexible one and attach one to either. I had it mounted here and that over the top because the table moves backwards and forwards. So it has to move through it and out of it, through it and out of it. So if I can mount it on there, then perhaps the framework can travel. So, but. I won't have time to do that because I won't want to get stuck in them. So you don't vacuum this up because your vacuum cleaner will, the filter will block up in matters of seconds. So what you do is you scatter the rag and you moisten it. Now you can use oil or water, whatever you like, and then just wipe it up. Some old pair of socks or jocks or t-shirts and you just wipe it up and throw them out. And then uh, it's not in the air, it's not blocking anything, and you can clean it. So you have to do that all the time. 
This is a window on the far side of the workshop and I have to lean over the tea bit grinder and all that so to clean it. But you can see that's just from the tool and cutter. So that's where I leaned over and cleaned it. That's how dirty it is. That's on the other side of the workshop. So wrap all your machines in tarpaulins, those plastic tarpaulins, all of them. Because if you put it on your machine, it's just like lapping paste. Grind, grind, grind. Well, it's tomorrow and we're all set up to grind. I've done the setup. So I'll just show you what we've done and what we're going to do. Set up the little cubby house. <laughs> so, as you can see, I've had to spin the head around, swing that around, swing that around, even though that says 30 degrees over there, over here you can see it doesn't. So you have to line the wheel up by eye. I put a two foot rule in there and line it up with the table. It's close enough. And there wasn't enough height to use the rear block sitting up that way. Because as you can see they stick out. So you can say, gee that's fairly dangerous. Look how much it's hanging out. You can never mill that. Never in a month and Sundays. So, what do I do? Didn't move. So, that's secure enough for light cuts. But before I could finish setting this up, I've got a light there. Had to wrap up the laves and the mills and tarpaulins so as the crap doesn't go everywhere. So once you set up it's quick but <laughs> getting the tarpaulins out and where you've put it and all that sort of stuff. So I'll just start her up and set up the cut and come back and show it to you. So the wheel side up is ran down and I'm going to start cut. So there we go. Now the guy right here and the zero. It's T 102 for the V. Uh, and it's point two, so I have to go up to 50 for the um, mill. Now, how do I know if I've gone one mill? Well, what's the width of that going to be? So, if you know your, your map, you would have worked it out and two millimeters. Now, we I like to, I like to just wind and cut at the same time. Look at that. Nothing fell off. So the plan is to plunge down and then just take the slide. The cross cut, then wind it back up. I was going to just leave it and then take a big deep cut, but never push your luck. It's unsafe, credit is unsafe. Always, always bear that in mind. So I'll just take a couple of more cuts and see how we go. Yeah, I'll let you go out in there. Yeah. So I'll switch it off and I'll just go on this one and we'll see how it looks. As I done, as you can see, 
So we can get it to focus it. Not so bad. But it's only down 0.25, so that's uh, just over a millimetre. So as you can see, the black and the silvery chrome looking looks nice. So, So yeah, I'll just switch it, switch it over to all the other sides. Now the thing is, you got to remember, each time you grind, you have to wipe your job down, make sure you deburr it, wipe all this down, and then that gets rid of all the grit, and then you can put it back. Two reasons for that, accuracy, and stop it from scratching everything. My other benefit of using the... This, there we go, now it's in focus. One other benefit of using the mag chuck is that these magnetic V blocks, they're not transfer blocks, they have a magnet in them. The only one of the drawbacks, let's say, was that if you put that on the table and you've clocked something up and you know you've done all this, you've done all that, and you set it all up, then you switch it on. And it's great. You do your machining. But then when you come to do the next one, you gotta undo it, pull the job off. Okay, thanks, yeah. There you go. Thanks, mate. There. Yeah. eBay's favorite customer. I should get uh, a million hits of eBay rather than a few of um, YouTube. All right, like you say. You pop that down, set your job up, lock it, so it's magnetised. But then when you're trying to undo it, you're likely to move it. So every time you put a job on, you have to magnetise it. Now you have to reset it up. So if you can use those little flats there, clamp it down on your middle or something on here, uh, that will save you. A lot of mucking about. Then the other problem too is that they have the big knob, great to get leverage. But the trouble is you can only sit it on that end when it's facing this way. So if you've got a round cylinder, you now just say you want to dress the wheel, get your round cylinder, put it in there. Trouble is, it has to stick at much further out. Whereas if they were smart, they would make these removable, and they would have the shaft here tapped, but also with a hex, Allen key hex. So this would fit in, and you could. You know, undo, screw here, take that off, and then you could just use your Allen key to swing them around, and then you and then you you don't lose all that weight. So the jobs instead of sitting over here like that, it's sitting way down there. So that's a suggestion for the manufacturers. But as you see, still there, didn't fly off. Still got all my fingers. There they are. All done now. Now we'll just pull them up. Now some people often ask, what do you got springs there for? Well they're actually a buffer stop. Smooth it down. So when you're hitting, it doesn't go clunk, clunk, clunk. Now why is it important that it doesn't go clunk, clunk, clunk? It's important because What would happen because this isn't locked, yeah. You know, taking a cut under there, wind across, go backwards and forwards. And if you go too far, bang, the head would drop. <laughs> so the shock waves would go all the way through. Plus, you wonder 
that vibration. Now that on a long stalk, come out another long stalk, another one counterbalanced over here. So you might see the tricks whether I put a coin on to show you the vibration. <laughs> Even if you aerodited it down, it would fall off. So that's the trouble with this design of tool and cutter. It moves, but it jams, that jams on here, that jams on there. That scale's not the same as that scale. Yeah, so it was a good idea at the time as the mouse said to the mouse trap. So, so that's it done. We blocks perform quite well. So I'll use them for some other jobs. So yeah, maybe just leave it here and I want to do quick deburring or I can just leave it on there and just spit a file on it. Just put it up for a quick deburr. So as always, if you've got any questions, don't forget to subscribe and they'll be answered. And as always, thanks for watching.